If you're interested in what doctors are actually looking at to guide them on an integrative approach for rheumatoid arthritis, then keep watching. This is Dr. Micah Yu, board certified in integrative medicine and rheumatology. And today we're gonna to be focusing on the American College of Rheumatology's integrative medicine guidelines for rheumatoid arthritis. In this channel, not only will I be sharing with you my experience as a patient and as a doctor, but I also want to share with you what other doctors might be looking at in ways that they can guide them in how to approach patients. We're gonna focus in on these guidelines here, and this is important and it's pretty groundbreaking because integrative medicine is finally making its way into rheumatology and they actually have created guidelines just for rheumatoid arthritis. So I would love to hear from you and at the end, comment below on whether you're in agreement or disagreement with the American College of Rheumatology's guidelines and if you are practicing any of these and whether they are helping you at all. Many, many years ago, patients who have been dismissed if they mentioned that exercise or diet or stress played a role in their disease. But now, patients are being acknowledged and it's actually talked about in medicine and in rheumatology. So the American College of Rheumatology has a bunch of guidelines for different diseases that guides doctors on how to treat patients. So they have a section here on integrative medicine and there are two parts to this. There's a summary version, which I'm gonna go over with you and show you. And there's a more comprehensive version, which is like many pages. But the way these guidelines work is that rheumatologists and different doctors, they're gonna get together in a room and they're just gonna discuss different findings and the evidence and the research behind different conclusions. And they're gonna determine whether something is either strongly recommended, conditionally recommended, or even not recommended. So there's different grades here that we're gonna talk about. In this column, they talk about how they strongly recommend consistent exercise. So I completely agree with that. However, they don't specify which exercises that they strongly recommend, but they do have exercises that they conditionally recommend, which include aerobic exercise such as running. Uh, they also conditionally recommend aquatic exercises, which could be swimming. They also recommend resistant exercises, which could be weightlifting. And finally, they do recommend mind-body medicine exercises, which could include Tai Chi, yoga, and Qigong. And I completely agree with all of these. I love exercises, it's anti-inflammatory. In part two, they discuss about rehab. So rehab is important and I agree with them. And in the top three here that they mention are occupational therapy, they talk about physical therapy, and they talk about hand therapy as well. And I agree with all of these when patients need it, which is what they recommend. And I'm not gonna go over the rest of this rehab category. You can read about it in the description below and look at the summary here. In general, if patients need rehab to help their disease, then I agree with that. And so does the American College of Rheumatology. All right, let's get to my favorite part, diet. So I'm not 100% agreeing with the ACR, American College of Rheumatology's recommendations on diet. They mentioned that they do conditionally recommend the Mediterranean style diet. So why do they conditionally recommend versus strongly recommend? Well, they said in the details on the actual manuscript, they said that they conditionally recommend because the evidence isn't strong enough. It's either low to moderate evidence and it just has, it's not, the evidence isn't strong enough for them to say that this is an absolute diet. So I'm in agreement with the Mediterranean diet. I like it, I think it's great, I think it's anti-inflammatory. However, they don't recommend here that other diets out there that a lot of people will talk about, such as vegan, vegetarian, paleo, or keto diet. They also don't recommend any supplements for patients. They, they're actually against it. So they said that the MS isn't there at this time, which is why they don't recommend other diets as well. In my perspective, other diets can be useful and actually potentially 
help patients significantly. I do advocate for other diets other than Mediterranean diet, but if a patient goes on a Mediterranean diet, I'm all for that. One thing I'm also not in agreement with is the fact that they are against dietary supplements. In my experience as a patient and as a doctor and as a rheumatologist, diets can be very helpful for patients in controlling their disease and their pain as well. But of course, every patient is different. Sometimes patients go on these different supplements and it doesn't really help them. Every patient is different. But overall, I'm okay with these guidelines on the diet part, but I'm definitely not 100% agreeing with them. All right, let's go over this last category here. I'm in agreement with some of these things that they mentioned. So they recommend cognitive behavioral therapy for RA patients. I'm okay with that. They also recommend acupuncture, which I'm a big fan of. They also, they say that they continuously recommend massage therapy as well. However, they are against electrotherapy. They don't think that there's enough evidence for some of these modalities and they're also against chiropractic therapy in my opinion if these things work for patients i'm all for it but if it doesn't really help i don't expect patients to keep going for it because it is additional cost and when they mention electrotherapy they're talking about nerve stimulation devices and tens units they are not for that so now that I've briefly gone over the American College of Rheumatology's guidelines, I want to hear from you. Comment below and let me know what you think about these guidelines. Overall, I'm pretty surprised that these guidelines even came out and I'm pretty impressed on what they put together. Am I 100% in agreement with them? Not exactly. In my experience as an integrative rheumatologist, I think that there are things that they have not strongly recommended or they were against that could help patients a lot. However, I understand why they did certain things and they only conditionally recommended versus strongly recommended because the evidence isn't strong enough for some of these modalities and interventions. So I completely understand it from their perspective. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to this channel and comment below on what else you wanna see from me. I'll see you next time to talk more about autoimmune diseases, and integrative medicine.